When I got started with microchip picks many, many years ago, almost everybody used a homemade development tool, such as the ones developed by a German guy who was only called Sprut. But in the last few years, microchip basically completely eradicated all of this cottage industry with their pick kit and ICD products. And both of these product lines very recently got significant updates. And in this video, I'm going to show you both the new Bluetooth functionality on the pick kit 5 and the SMU functionality on the ICD 5. So, and in the first step, let's cut into this really oversized box of goods around here. And we find a ton of packaging material. And inside, we find the actual, the first microchip, small unit. We find some labels from DigiKey and we find the big box with the ICD-5. Let's start out by unboxing the small one. We see here the anti-static bag is still from DigiKey and now we are getting into the actual microchip territory and we see a very nice, quite compact little black box. Let's cut into it here in the back. And here we already see the pick kit 5 and we get at the bottom a cable which is now USB-C and we get a few little stickers. And now it's time to look at the big ICD-5 box. Huge anti-static bag there. Also it's a huge, very, very large box. And now we have to cut into it again. We cut here into it, you see this thing, now we are here, and we see a similar presentation, but here we see the ICD-5, which is now square, and here we have the ICD cables kit, we're going to look at that, that's some flat band wires, and it's one debugging whip. And we have to look again for the cable. Here we don't find it. The cable is below here and it's the same high quality USB-C cable which we've seen on the picket. The first cool feature is the ability to deploy multiple different programs via this push button. For this, of course, in the first step, here you need to insert a memory card, format it with FAT. Basically just about any memory card size will do, because these programs usually are very, very small. And what is important in the next step, you see here, you need to use a recent version of MPLAB X. I'm using 6.15 here, but in general, the more recent, the better. And now in the next step, we can go here into the properties. And we see here we have a Picket 5 connected. And now here with programmer to go, we can give an image name and then we can send the image to the tool. And when we do this, the MPLAB will automatically deploy the program onto this memory card. So, and now I've got the thing connected to a stupid power supply and I can start the MPLAB PTG application like so. 
and we see that it is running a Bluetooth LE scan. Sometimes, of course, permission dialogs pop up and you need to make sure that the Bluetooth option is switched on. And yes, currently there is a bug you see here. It finds the thing, so you have to click no and only then you can connect. And now you see here, I've got the option micro SD card ready to browse. I go browse SD. At least usually it works. Let's enable the programmer to go mode. Now we can browse. And now we see here two images which I've loaded before. And we can select one of these images. And then you see here it is ready to program. So then the worker just has to plug it in and click program and will deploy. And this is a great simplification, especially when you do a lot of assembly with relatively unskilled workers. And now for the next step, we are going to need a little bit of dedicated hardware because the large MPLAB programming device now also has the ability to act as an SMU. And here we've got a relatively simple 8-bit board left over from an old project. And over there we have two LEDs. And the idea is going to be that we're going to load different programs. Once we'll blink the two LEDs alternatingly and once in another sequence. And then we're going to see if we are able to see the power consumption using the MPLAB's analysis features. And now there is a little problem because you see this old VIP has a different connector to the new one. And microchip says that these do mate. And as you see here, they do mate, but it is a kind of uneasy, queasy fit. But you see, it does mate. For practical development, I'll be honest, it just works best with Windows 11. So now I'm VNCing into my Windows 11 box. And here we have the two programs, Run Me Quick Run and Run Me Quick 2. And we see here in Run Me Quick 1, we set both high and then we toggle both. And now we go in here again into the properties. And here we have to find the hardware tool. Sometimes the hardware tool doesn't show up, the ICD5. So then you have to disconnect and reconnect. And yes, we see here the tool detection at the moment seems to fail a little bit. So even if we force it to use an ICD5, we see it still doesn't want to. So sometimes you have to reboot the thing in this case. And yes, this is a little bit quixotic because we can see it here. So let us try to start it once again. Here it offers us this update, but we don't want that for now. And we see now we have the ICD5. So now we can select the ICD5. This takes a bit of time, of course. We can connect and now we can click here and we can do a run and a compile to deploy the program. Yes, this is the usual blah, blah, blah. If we get this warning here, then we know it's a kind of crappy connection and now we see the LEDs blink already. Like so, we see the LEDs blink. And now we want to perform a power analysis. For this we go here into the MPLAB data visualizer which is a component which also sometimes crashes, so you need to bring some patience. 
And now here we click the power, we say plot row, we close it and now here we see the power coming up and down as you see here. And yes, it is synchronized to the light emitting diodes. And in practice, of course, you would be well advised when you are running this from a laptop, like I'm doing here, to plug in an external power supply, because in that case, more power is made available, especially on these MSI units. But either way, we see here, we have the power analysis working flawlessly. And yes, because I'm unhappy about the flimsy connector, I built myself this adapter. But sadly, it has a small problem. Namely, it inverts the pin sequence. So you saw <coughs> before, this here was pin 1 and I plugged it in like this. If you want to use the adapter, you have to plug it in opposingly. So pin 6 goes into pin 1. And now we see that it works again. I mean, this is a bit of a stupid design, I admit it, but I believe it makes life quite a bit easier than having to mess around with this connector here. And yes, I'm going to share the Gerber files. So if any one of you ever wants to take a shot, this is the thing to use. And yes, we've got the usual warning that purchasing development kits at list price is injurious to your financial health. Here we have the ICD5 and it's important you get the manufacturer number and then with that you can go here and we can do a comparison. And we see that the cheapest offer is around 358, the most expensive is 438. So this is quite a spread and if we take the smaller one, We also see quite a bit of a spread. Here we have 86, here we have 90, here we have 102. So especially when you purchase a larger piece of test equipment, don't follow my usual advice, but do shop around a little bit to save some money. And yes, with that, I wanted to thank you. If you want to make me happy, maybe buy a copy of my book for a cadet for Christmas. And I'm thankful for you watching this and see you next time. Bye bye.